Final Cut Pro for iPad is now out. We will have a first hands-on all together. I just downloaded the app. I had to make sure that I have the latest update on my iOS. I didn't have the latest one. The newest one is now 16.5, but it told me in the App Store I need 16.4. So I first had to update my iPad. And if you don't find it in the App Store right now, look for Final Cut Pro for iPad. That's how I found it. I'm sitting here in Portugal. So this is the German account because my Apple account is in Germany so that's why I think this should be now available in Europe as well. I also downloaded Logic Pro. We have it here on our iPad Final Cut Pro and let's just do this together. The very first time you have a message with what kind of pricing you want to have monthly or yearly you get one month for testing. I just signed up for yearly because I will test this and will make videos about this and then this is how it looks. I haven't tested anything yet. We will do everything now together. We have a new project here. You could download a test project. I don't want to do this. We would just work with what they have on the iPad. So you can create a new project here, give it a name. So let's make it test project one. And then you can choose a format. It says automatic. Automatic sets the orientation, resolution and the frame rate to a match at the first clip added to the timeline. So if you don't know in what kind of timeline you're working, you could use this and then just use the clip from your camera. I know what kind of timelines I want to work. That's why I will change that here and say custom. And now what can we do? We can go up to 4K. Can we do more? We have 4K, we have full HD, HD and we have <laughs> even HD. Okay, anything else we can do, go custom and change those values. Can we can we manipulate them completely like we want? Let's say this and hey, I want I want the other one. Or oh, is it always huh? Can I not change it? What about the height? Oh, height here. I was I was clicking here, but you can click here and then change it there. Can I can I create something weird like this? Yeah, it, it seems it seems okay. So, well, but let's do this. What I use still for YouTube the most and for a video like this, I just use uh, full HD. That's totally fine. And it says landscape. I can change that. Oh, with that one, you can make vertical videos or landscape videos. So vertical videos for TikTok, Instagram Reels. <laughs> we make a YouTube video right now. So let's do landscape, color space, Rec 709. That's what most devices can do. So if you don't know which one to choose, you should choose just Rec 709. If you have an iPhone, like my iPhone, and I record in HDR, then I should be able to, yeah, here, HDR. That's basically all you can select. There's no custom. So not like in Da Vinci where you can actually select all kinds of different color spaces. But anyway, I suggest you just use that. That's fine because then most people can see it. Frame rate, let's see what we can do here. I like to have it cinematic. So I go to 24 frames. Also the file size is smaller. And this is this typical frame rate you have in, in uh, Hollywood as well. But you can also go up to 60 and here 24. Okay, continue. So what do we wanna do? New project, import from files. Okay, probably know what I'm thinking right now. Okay, <laughs> I just got my SSD. I saw videos that people said you cannot access an SSD drive. And I was curious if that works or if it doesn't work. And if I can say import from files, the files app can read SSD. So what I will do now, before we even go in there, I will plug in here my dongle and I will also plug in my SSD. And just to make sure, actually let's open the files app to show you that, <laughs> not my podcast. <laughs> so if your external SSD is connected here in the files app, I can actually see it here. So let's go back to Final Cut and let's go here for import from files. And let's see what happens. External SSD, I can choose my external SSD. So let's go for any video project that I did in the past. Here my YouTube channel and just select random clips here. Let's see if we can work or what it does. Maybe it, it imports them into the folder of DaVinci. Let's see what happens, open. So what is it doing? It is loading them. So I guess what it's doing in the background somewhere in the cache there must be a cache file or something and it's now downloading from my SSD to the internal storage. So at least that means we can use it to get files, but it will copy them to your hard drive. So you have to then make sure that you have enough space. This is kind of nice in DaVinci Resolve because I can work on my SSD. I don't know if I can change that later. We will see that later. But now first impression, we are here in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I can click my clips here. You have this kind of project media files here where you can click it. You can change aspect ratio. Okay, I can see the full clip. Okay, with this one, I just see the squares. 
I can change show clip names. So I see the name here. I can change huh, high clip names, sort by. I can sort, okay. Can I do a list? I'm not sure if I can do a list, what is that? The media types, the keyword, favorite, rejected. I don't see how I can change it to a list. I can select, no, that's fine. Okay, I can click this and click here. Today I will show you how you play. How you can create this little circle if you make a tutorial in Da Vinci Resolve. And you basically see my timeline now here. Not the timeline, the, the clip that is selected right now. Oh, nice. So if I scrub through this, I can hear the sound. I can grab the ends and change the in and out point. It's probably the same like this one here. Yep. So wherever your cursor is, your play hat, you can also click this one, in point, and then here the out point, or the maximum. Well, let's do this. And I can probably grab this one, place it down. No, that doesn't work. Can I grab this one? Yo, I can grab this and place it here down to my timeline. Now I have my video in my timeline. I can hit play here. Or if you have the magic keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard, spacebar. So what about if we want to cut something? So we are here now in. And how they did it, and I think this is cool. This is kind of better than in DaVinci Resolve for my first impression. So if I select a clip and there's my play hat, everything I can do with the clip is here on the bottom. So I can delete the whole clip, of course, then it's gone. Backwards, backwards, return. There, there's return. So I can delete, I can make a cut. So I have two clips. I also have ripple trim backwards and ripple trim forwards. Since DaVinci Resolve 18.5, we have that too, but it's a little bit hidden. This is one of the reasons why I like the keyboard shortcuts because when you have keyboard shortcuts, you can just do that. Oh, what is I see Q? Oh, and it adding, <laughs> Q is adding clips, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I have to definitely learn the keyboard shortcuts there and see what we can change there. So what else can you do? Let's use the pencil. I can use the pencil to swipe here in. If I, if I go into this area here, I can hold it and move my timeline. I can click on the play hat. This is nice, the play hat is very smooth and I could also drag up and down. So you place your play hat, click the clip, you wanna do something, let's say for example here, ripple trim forward. So that means from this playhead, everything to here will be deleted. Boom. Yes, nice, it works. And I think this is nice that you have that. So if you have your iPad in your hand and you wanna edit something, let's just do that. So I can now use the finger here and then just cut. So here, cut, ripple trim, take this clip here, move it, move it, move it. Let's move it. No, let's drag another clip in here. Come on. Drag, drag in here, so ripple trim. So what I don't like is that I have to select a clip. This is something that I noticed, maybe this is interesting now for you. So we have different apps on our iPhone, right? I have, for example, InShot, I have a tutorial even on InShot, and CapCut. CapCut is the free software from uh, the same producer like uh, TikTok, which is a good app, you can do a lot of stuff there. And InShot, for example, you can just basically hover with your playhead wherever you are and just hit the cut button and it cuts through everything. And this is basically also how I use DaVinci Resolve. If I have my shortcut for S cut, I cut through everything. And how I see if you use the pencil here in Final Cut right now, you have to select a clip, place it and then hit cut. Obviously, if you are in the same clip, then it's nice, it still selects it. But if I wanna make a cut here, I don't even see it. What happens with ripple forward? What? Okay, interesting, ripple backwards, interesting. But anyway, then we have this interesting thing. That is now the first time I will test this. Here on the right, that's your jaw wheel or jog wheel or how is it called? If you click this and now I can actually use this to move to, through my timeline. I can also, for example, click a clip and let's say I click the end here. And if I now change, no, it doesn't work. How does it work? Ah, if I change it here. So if you click on this one, I can either say play hat, then it's changing my play hat, or the clip that I selected right now, if I change this one here to nudge, now I can change the nudge, make the nudge smaller or bigger, like this. Oh, it's very smooth, that's cool. I can click the other end, change the nudge there. That works as well. And if you click the X, it closes, and you can now basically move this one wherever you want here on the left. Can I also do it this side? Yeah, I can do it this side. What about here on the bottom? I think it's always the sides. 
Yeah, you can do this here on the sides. What about that? What about top? What about what about if I what about if I turn my iPad? Does it actually do something? No. It keeps it horizontal. Same like DaVinci Resolve, of course. Um, yeah, so you can change the position wherever you want to like to work. Hit the X and place it somewhere. So what else? Oh yeah, I saw something interesting here. When we click on this one, we can actually do video scopes. We can turn on video scopes, vector scopes. Oh yeah, nice. So now when I'm viewing the timeline, I see the vector scopes. I can also change that to the waveform and change it to the histogram. That's cool for color correction. What I even saw before Final Cut is coming out is that, yeah, Final Cut has some features that are still only available in the Final Cut version when you go to the Mac. So for example, if I select a click and then let's go here to Inspector and then Transform Audio Effects. And let's say I add an effect, color adjustment. So now I can go in here into the color adjustment and this is how you do color correction, exposure, contrast. You have basically this little wheel here. I can change that, see the color changes that I can do. And it's very simple. You can do the basic stuff you can do. And if you want to do advanced color correction, color grading, you actually have to import it into Final Cut on your uh, Mac. If you don't have a Mac, then get DaVinci Resolve for free because you don't have to have the studio version to use most of the functions of the color page of DaVinci Resolve. So this is probably how I would do it just with an iPad. Bring it over then to DaVinci. You have now DaVinci here and you have Final Cut here. So we have effects, we have the color adjustments, we have mask and keying, corner mask, shape mask. And just for that purpose now I will turn off the scope, off, mask and keying. We have a corner mask. So let's see what this is. We can take those corners and, oh, interesting, nice. The color correction, now only, <laughs> oops, what happened? Oh, that's interesting, so it's very fast. This is now interesting, so wherever my mouse is, it immediately jumps with the viewer. Here timeline, media pool. And also here, ah, so I don't have to click anything, I can just immediately jump between those two. Okay, that's interesting. So we are working here right now. We have the color, the corner mask, so I can make a mask and the color correction that I did is now only applied to that mask. All the technical stuff, I will create a Final Cut Pro for iPad Masterclass. So if you're into that, under this video, I will put a waiting list. If you wanna have 50% off when it starts and launch, you will get this 50% uh, discount when you join the waiting list. Uh, whenever the Final Cut is ready for launch, then uh, you will send, I, will get, I will send an email and you will get it. Uh, when you click here, you come back to your project, you can double tap it and then, no, you can't double tap it. You have to say what, edit? Oh, okay, no, that's kind of stupid. I can't double tap this, why not? Can I double tap here? Oh, it's playing the timeline. Okay, I can see the timeline here. What is that? You can change the name. That was the test project. You can delete it, make a new project. Okay, let's go back in. Uh, what about if this is now my project? Probably a lot of people who have Final Cut Pro want to see now, can I export this? How can I actually work? So the way it works is you can click here on the top and then you can say Final Cut Pro for iPad project and you can export that project. And this is the project that you can import into Final Cut Pro on your Mac. You also have to update to the newest version on Final Cut Pro that also just released and is available. You can also just current frame, that's cool. So you can just make an image, PNG, JPEG, that is cool. You can even change the color space, okay. One of the functions I wanna see is the drawing. So we have here this tab on the top with the drawing. If I click this, I see now my frame in big, and then everybody who uses an iPad recognize that we have now this, same like with screenshots, right? If I make a screenshot and you open the screenshot, you also have the palette here and you can do stuff. This is, yeah, if you don't know that, but this is amazing. And then you can save it, you can make your notes. And basically it's the same here. I can now change a color, let's say green, and then right here, this is Amazing, oh my God, my handwriting. <laughs> and then we say done. And now the cool thing about this is it created an animation. So I can hit play and I already have this animation. That is cool. So what about if I place this one here on the end? Options, snapping, position, 
show control and timelines, appearance, clip height. I can change how big the clips are, oh, that's nice. Audio meters, I can activate audio meters so I see when I talk. And now we can change this. Yeah, can I do anything here? Oh yeah, by the way, if you do want to do a right click, you just longer press, for example, wherever you want to do a right click. Right click on the clip will open this. Render selection, okay. Render selection, or not. Probably did a proxy or a video, wherever it is now. What is that? Final Cut Pro, would you like to access your camera? Yep. Uh, microphone, yep. I'm recording right now. So, front camera and uh, back camera, front camera. Hey, the setup, my microphone. So you have video, you have slow motion, you have a couple of settings here. And the cool part about this one now, oh, the focus, you can change the focus. Huh? Was it not the other camera right now? No, ah, it doesn't. Okay, this is my front camera. It also depends now the settings, which camera you have, like this one. So you can do the focus on your main camera. You can use the other camera, 0 0.5. Hey, that's cool, my wide angle, hello. And then you have some settings here, like for example, the white balance that you can change, the exposure that you can change. You can open the light and not uh, activate the light. You can do the same in slow motion as well. White balance, you can change that. So use the pencil, yeah. You can make it warm, you can make it cold. Look at the exposure, make it dark, make it overexposed. Yeah, that works. So you can record videos inside of Final Cut Pro and then use them straight away and you have more settings, more pro settings for the camera app then. Does it with the new update? I haven't even checked. Let's just double check that if we now have that with the new update as well. So camera, video, we have just the auto, if I open this one here or this, no, I don't have this yet. So you have those pro settings only if you go inside of Final Cut Pro and open the camera app here. Then you have the pro settings. Let's just record a video with all the settings. If I change my camera while I'm recording, yeah, that works. And then done. And let's see what happens if we finish. This video now comes in here. And let's see if it's also in my photo app right now. It's not in the photos app. I don't know where it will save, but it's not in the photos app. So we have to figure out where this is. Click longer on this one. We can make it a favorite, reject. Let's reject. I don't even know what reject is. Maybe let me know in the comments. Export to. I can save this now. Then it would be in my photos app. So what else do we have here on the top? We can open the media pool here. We can change to video and audio effects like color gradings. So you have effects here. You have transitions here. You have titles and backgrounds. Those are all pre-designed things. You have objects. Make a basic shape and bring this in. I have a basic shape. I can click it in my viewer. Let's close the inspector. I can click it, change the points here, make it smaller, rotation. I mean, rotation on a round object is still round, okay. Zoom, big, small. Okay, we have different objects here. I have to download them first and then they come down. That's this one. Oh, it's a countdown, kind of, opposite countdown. Uh, counter. <laughs> okay, then we have soundtracks, driving. So you have a sound uh, library that you can use here. So you, we can bring in this one, we can download that. So you have to download it, burn hybrid. And so where does it go? Do I just place that as a clip? Yeah, you just place that like this. Ah, so you can also activate this jog wheel here with this one on the top, open or close if you want to see it or if you don't want to see it at all. You have multicam. I will make a separate video just about the multicam. You have animations, so you can make keyframes here inside. You can change the volume. Let's take this shape. So we have a keyframe here. So now I have one keyframe here and let's say I have another keyframe here, tuck. And on that position, we bring this one over here and let's see if it actually works. Inside of the cycle circle, just go back. No, it didn't work, of course. <laughs> Format opacity. Oh, this is just the opacity. Basic shape. All. Okay, you know what? Let's do it again. All. We start with a keyframe here and our shape is here. And then we go to this position, add another keyframe. And let's take this shape, move it here, make it bigger. And let's see if that one worked. Hit play. 
just go back to yep data. it works <laughs> so you can do keyframes there as well you just have to make sure that you select everything that you want to select so for example standard was just the opacity so making it visible or not visible and if you want to change everything like i just did then change it to all and then it will make those but if you just want to do the positioning so it was positioning if you also want to change scaling yeah then just go to all and then this is how you can do keyframes. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. This was just an introduction. I will not make an opinion about the program yet because I also wanna play around with the program and really see what kind of cap capacity we have with the program or not. Definitely sign up for the waiting list if you wanna learn Final Cut Pro, the masterclass. In this masterclass, I will do exactly the same that I did also with DaVinci Resolve. I will keep it up to date. So every time when they come up with a new update, introduce new features, I will put this into the masterclass as well. Well, I personally are still hyped for the fast animation that you can do with the pencil. So even if I probably will edit more in DaVinci Resolve, I mean, my, my whole channel is all about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. And I also think, so my first impression, we can do more with DaVinci Resolve, especially since we found out that we have the other pages. Yes, some of the other pages still crash. And this is why in a time like now, um, so not everything is crashing in DaVinci Resolve if you have never used DaVinci Resolve, but the people who are on this journey with me already longer, they know some stuff we can do, some stuff we still have to, like it's not officially, but we will get everything else. The color page, way more. So there's no question about this. I mean, there was no question even before DaVinci Resolve is already better than the other software, but it, this is one point that I really don't like. Even that they just put the sliders in, um, I think this is just, yeah, it's not really meant for heavy, color correction, color grading. Yeah, for that you need a different software. So anyway, if you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro for the iPad, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bang bang gong. And um, also if you wanna get the masterclass and 50% discount, then sign up for the waiting list. I will put a link in the description. And we see us in the next video. And this is Daniel, bye.